Okay, here I talk about another method of evangelism. I call it experience God evangelism. This is a way to help people experience the Holy Spirit and lead them to Christ. That first we want to have compassion on people who are not safe because they, you know, that God says that God desires, God desires mercy and not sacrifice. God is pleased with people who have compassion on the people. So if we have compassion on people, God is very happy with us, and God will bless us. And God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants us all to be saved. And heaven is perfect, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. So there will be, in heaven, there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering, no more curse. That's the best place to go to. Do you want to go to heaven? That's the best place. And then four, so we tell people suffering in hell. Their, their worms does not die, and the fire is not quenched. So in hell, there will be worms that bites, and fire is, that is not quenched. And then five, eternal punishment or eternal life. In Matthew 25, 46, then there, these people will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And then six, God and other people sow and will reap. John 4, 37. So this is to encourage people to to uh, do evangelism. <clears throat> For in this, the saying is true. One sows and another reaps. I send you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into the labors. In John 4.37, <clears throat> that this says that one sows and another Reaps. Now, for the disciples of Jesus, they were the first one to preach the gospel. But already someone else have, have, sow, have sown. So who is the other one? I think it is God. God who sows in the heart of people. And then we just go to reap the harvest. God who put the desire in the heart of people that they want to believe in God. And then we go and reap the harvest. So I send you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into the labors. So this is talking about God doing the labor, the work to draw people to God. And then we preach the gospel, and then there will be people saved. So it is easy work, although it's hard because many people don't believe. But we continue to do it, there will always be some people who are saved. Now, experience God evangelism. First, we converse with the person and listen and respond to their feelings and needs. So that's the first thing. Actually, when we do any evangelism, it's good to talk with the person first, to build up relationship, to listen to them, to listen to them about their troubles, their uh, unhappy experiences or happy experiences. And then we share the pain or the joy. Now, at this point, it's very important for us not to teach. Actually, very often, <clears throat> when people share about the suffering, many Christians will just say, pray, 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 and then uh, you'll be okay. Now, the people don't feel our empathy. We want to understand people's suffering. We'll say, I know it's not easy to go through difficult things like that. I know it's hard for you. So we have empathy for the person. Imagine <clears throat> that something just happened to your family. And then you tell someone. And then the person just say, pray, pray, and you'll be okay. But you're, in your heart you say, you know, I'm in deep trouble. I'm in great pain. And you don't know my pain. And you just say, pray. So it's just telling someone to do something, telling someone to pray. Now, it's true prayer does help, but when we tell people, then it's a command. 
It's just telling people. It's the law. So that's why I said to people, don't use the law to motivate people. And tell them. We can, now first we want to em empathize with them and say, I know you're suffering. I know it's painful for you. Now, can you, can you uh, put yourself into that shoe of that other person and think of when you are really suffering, when one member of your family has died, and then you told someone, and then the person says, oh, I know, you must be very unhappy. Uh, you must feel sad that you have missed that person. You know, if someone says that to you, you say, you understand me. So that's empathy. For first of all, we have empathy. And then, uh, so we respond to the person. Now, there are many different ways we can respond. We can say, <clears throat> now, instead of teaching, don't, don't start teaching, but people like to teach. For instance, someone just has sickness. Other people like to say, uh, uh, let me tell you, you, you go and take this medicine and go to see the doctor, you'll be okay. So people like to tell people what to do. <clears throat> but actually, we can just have empathy and say, I know it's difficult for you. I know it's not easy. Uh, how do you feel now? You can ask. How do you feel now? Uh, do you, where do you feel pain? How's your sleep now? So we can find out from the person and, and feel as if we were that person and we feel that pain. This is, this is empathy. So feel the pain of the person and tell the person. Okay? <clears throat> and then share how or someone else has similar problems and experience help from God now. So after we respond to the feelings, and then we can share how we or someone else have similar problems and experience help from God. So if we have experienced that, we can tell them, yeah, and someone has hurt me also, and I felt very, very bad. And then, now we can bring the person to, to have more interest by saying, do you know what happened after that? Instead of just telling what happened, we can ask, do you know what happened after that? And then we can tell him that, um, you know, later I knew Jesus and then I pray and my sad feelings went away and Jesus healed my soul and I felt the joy of the Lord. So we can tell people how we experience help from God. And then three, invite him to receive the laying on of hands. Do you like me to lay hand on you and pray for you? And four, in the prayer, lead the person to relax and enjoy God and to open the heart to love God. So when we pray for people, tell them to relax. And I encourage you to lead people to pray to enjoy God. Instead of shouting and yelling. Now, some people like shouting. Shouting is fine in some situation. But shouting can give some people tension. Some people think shouting would have more power. The power doesn't come from the shouting. The power comes from God. Now in some situation, <clears throat> it might be good to shout, but don't do it all the time. And when, especially when someone is very sad, don't shout. And when we pray for them, I encourage you to pray like this, to enjoy God. Okay, you can stand up now. You can stand up now and pray with me and enjoy God. And I demonstrate how that we can have a prayer that is um, that help people to relax, that that we enjoy God ourselves. Okay, so stand up and relax, and you could experience the <clears throat> the Holy Spirit also when I do this. Hallelujah! Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. You're so wonderful. Father, you're so wonderful. We thank you. Now notice I'm declaring the goodness of God. And I'm responding to God. I'm praising God and loving God. And also, I will also declare how I know God is happy. And so I'm happy too. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're a wonderful God. You love us very much. You love us all the time. You're a gracious God. You care about us. You created us. You give us food, you give us 
rain and the sun. Oh, Father, we thank you. You're loving God. And you've given us the Holy Spirit. You've taken away our burdens. And you can give us peace. Thank you, Father. You are so real to us. You are so real to us. We trust in you. We thank you. We rely on you. God, you're so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, please take away the burdens of this friend. He might have some burdens in his heart. He might have some sadness that he is bothered by something, that he's worrying about something. Lord, come and comfort him and let him know that God is caring for him. God cares for us. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You love us very much. Lord Jesus, we love you. We want to enjoy you. We enjoy your love. We enjoy you. You are so wonderful. It's so wonderful to have you. Lord, we want to accept you as our Savior. Please forgive our sins and give us eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, you love us. Please bless this person so that he can experience your peace, your love, and take away his burdens, take away his sadness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you. We adore you. We like you. We enjoy you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, please, now, after we pray, we say, please keep your eyes closed. And please pay attention. Have you noticed that you have experienced anything in your heart and over your body? Now, if you have experienced anything, you can tell the leader, and the leader can send it in a group. That some people may experience peace, comfort to the body, may experience a swaying of the body. So you can ask the person, so this is number point number five. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Uh, and then we can say, have you experienced anything? Did you feel anything? So the person might feel something. But I usually like to ask experience first because some people say, well, uh, why do you do evangelism based on feeling? So I say experience because the Bible has many examples of people they are healed and then they believe in Jesus. And uh, like Lazarus was raised from the dead and many Jews believed because of this miracle. So there are many people who believed because of the miracle. So experience, when people experience God, they can believe in, they would, you know, many of them want to believe in Jesus. So, so I ask first, believe, but experience, have you experienced God in any way, anything? And, and sometimes people don't understand experience, and then we can say, feel, do you feel anything? Do you feel any peace or comfort? over yourself. Now, if the person has experienced some work from God, we can explain from the Bible that these are works of the Holy Spirit because the, the Bible said that peace I give to you. And also Jesus said, all you who are weary and burdened, come to me and I'll give you rest. So Jesus can give us rest. And also the comfort. In Psalm 16, verse 8 to 9, it says that, you know, that I put the Lord always in front of me and then you know, my heart will rejoice, my soul rejoices, and then my body will rest secure. So the body will also rest secure, uh, that the body can experience comfort. And in uh, Romans uh, chapter 8, verse uh, uh, chapter 5, uh, talk about that uh, the Holy Spirit can pour the love of God into our heart. So we can experience peace, love, joy, and also demons being driven out. And then we can explain from the Bible that this is what the Bible says. So you have experienced this. And then we can say you have experienced the work of God. Do you want God to bless you your whole life? So do you want God to bless your whole life? If you have experienced God's work. If He's willing, then explain that Jesus is God and has died for our sins to forgive our sins and give us eternal life as if He's willing to accept Jesus as His Savior. 
So this is basically asking people if they want to experience, uh, want us to pray for them, to experience God. So we need to practice this in the church. We need to do this in the church all the time that we learn to love God with all our heart and then, and then uh, to build up the anointing and then the pastor first laying on the people and for those Christians who have taken care of the sins who are not living in sin who have repented of the sins and turned away from the sins and even when they have sinful thoughts immediately they will take care of the sins then they can lay hand on the other people and then after they lay hand they can ask them uh, please, they will say, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? And then, uh, if the person has, then explain to them that you have experienced the work of God. So, and then we ask him to follow the sinner's prayer. This is another sinner's prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that you are God. I'm sorry for my sins. I've hurt other people's feelings. I've yelled at people. I have lied. I've been greedy and selfish. Thank you for dying on the cross to pay for the penalties of my sin. Please forgive my sins and give me eternal life. Thank you for loving me and giving me eternal life. I love you. I'm willing to follow you and love you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So this is also confessing the sin and asking God to forgive us. And 10. Ask the person if he has sincerely repented of his sins and ask Jesus to be his Savior. If he says he has, we can tell them that the Bible promises us that he is forgiven and will have eternal life. And then, 11, we should tell the person, We should tell the person how he can continue to follow God. So first, continue repent of his sins, continue to trust in Jesus as his Savior, continue to have a personal relationship with God by reading the Bible, praying, and praising God, and going to church to worship God, and continue to love God with all his heart, and obey God. Especially to tell people about Jesus and to follow Jesus and serve God. Anything we do to glorify God and bless people are serving God. So these are the, the six fruit of salvation that I've talked about earlier. Repent of the sins, trust in Jesus as Savior, build up relationship with God, and then love God, obey God, and serve God. And how do we use this method of uh, experience God evangelism? We can make friends with people whom we see and be kind and helpful to them and find opportunities to chat with them and to share with them about our experiences of God's blessing and respond to their needs and feelings, to have compassion on them, to have empathy for their suffering. We can invite people to activities or even treat them with the meals and then invite them to accept the prayer. So we can build up the relationship, we can invite them to activities or to the to a meal and then invite them to accept the prayer <clears throat> and then in a church we train people who can pray for others the training should include building up a strong relationship with God and a strong anointing with the Holy Spirit so build up a strong relationship with God so that there is a strong anointing to love God all the time to turn away from sin to give our life to God so that we have a strong relationship with God B Take care of different problems in life, in, in the life, like sins, lust, greed, negative thinking and emotions, influence from people, marriage problem, personal problem, and evil spirit. So take care of any of this problem, and ability to listen to people and empathize with them. So it's very important to, to not to teach people right away, but to listen to people. Now. You can ask many wives when they tell the husband about the problems. How did, how did the husband respond? Very often the husband will teach. And then you can ask the wife, how do you feel about that? And they will tell you they don't like it. Actually, 
think about how people teach you, how you do not like it. So it's when people are suffering, we don't want to teach them. We want to empathize with them. And then we can guide them by asking questions. Uh, I see that you are suffering now. Do you want to get out of this suffering? Do you want to start to enjoy life? And have you tried different ways? And does it work? And do you like me to tell you some ways that we can, uh, that you can become better, that you can become happier? So by asking questions, that is the, the way to do counseling. So uh, I notice that your suffering, is it affecting your life? Do you want to get out of this suffering? Have you tried different ways? And does it work? And do you like me to suggest to you some other ways? So using guidance questions, okay? <clears throat> and then the ability not to give pressure to people. <clears throat> when we ask someone to pray whether they would like me to pray for us, if the person says no, then we say, okay, it's okay, God bless you. That we care for them. Don't give people pressure. If we give people pressure, they will run away from the church. We don't want to give people pressure. We want to care about them. Give them freedom. E, practicing laying hands on people to help them to experience the Holy Spirit. So in a church, we can have special meetings. Now this would, would not be in the worship. Some meeting that we train the people who are devoted, that they spend more time praising God, loving God. Now, loving God is not necessarily shouting loudly, but to love God from the heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Flow out from the heart. Try to do this flow from the heart. It's easier to experience the Holy Spirit. Father, we love you. We love you. We worship you. An ability to follow on people, to grow in the Lord. So we want to train people in the church. <clears throat> and then building up a prayer team of the church. The prayer team should be trained in the above training. In the last page, that the training. And then second, the prayer team will invite anyone who comes to the church to accept prayers for strength or for evangelism. So we ask them, we talk to them first. And then we ask them, would you like me to pray for you? If the person says no, then we say, it's okay. And then if someone says he doesn't want us to pray for them, then we can tell the other team members uh, not to ask him again soon. Because if you ask him again and again, you know, three or four people ask him again and again, then he will feel pressure. So if he says no, um, we can talk with them, but don't ask them again until later some other time and uh, it is important not to pressure people and to allow people to reject being prayed for there should be evaluation of the prayer team so evaluate how we're doing and this is for for improvement and to prevent some improper behavior of the prayer of the team members so it's Okay, it's a revaluation of the prayer team members. And then it's for improvement, so that we won't continue some improper behavior. E, the team members should be appreciated in public. We say they've spent so much time being trained, and then they spend time praying for people, and God remembers what they do, and so, and so we remember them and appreciate them also. Now, in... Experience God evangelism. If we can hear God's voice, it's very helpful. Now, we all hear God's voice. The first voice, <clears throat> let me see. The first voice that any Christian hear is when we sin, the Holy Spirit will speak to us and tell us about the, our sins. So this is the first voice we hear. And also when we read the Bible or listen to sermon, the Holy Spirit will touch us and speak to us to remind us of our sins and tell us what to change, what to do. So these are ways that God speaks to us through the sermon or through uh, the Bible. 
And then also sometimes just in daily life, suddenly some thoughts come to us. Without knowing it, some thoughts will come to us that is helpful to us. And that is biblical. That could come from God. And also when we pray and concentrate and wait on the Lord, think about Jesus and wait on the Lord, that we can experience His. Sometimes God will speak to us. Now for me, many times when I hear from God is in my daily life, suddenly some thoughts just come to my mind, mind and then it's helpful to me or it's helpful for my teaching. So if we can hear God's voice, it's, it's very helpful for evangelism. When we can know the needs of the people, it is helpful for evangelism, counseling, and helping the spiritual life of Christians. Sometimes if we pray a lot and then we can hear God's voice, and then when we pray for someone we know their needs, then we can use it for evangelism or for building up the, the spiritual life or for counseling. Two, it is helpful to bring comfort and healing to people. It will comfort people. Three, it is helpful to find direction of the church. So if someone can hear from God, that person can help us to find direction for the church. But we have to verify whether this comes from God or not. And it's helpful to find out what's, what stops the growth of individuals and the church. So if someone hears from God, uh, the person might hear from God to find out why the church or the, some individuals stop to grow. Five, it is helpful to find strategic plans for individuals and the church to enter a higher level in God's plan. So we want to find a strategic plan of God so we can go to a higher level. And how to bring about <clears throat> a revival with evangelism and with the prayer team and with the experienced God evangelism. First, we be ourselves build a close relationship with God and experience God all the time. Now, for me, any time I pray to God, I experience His joy, hallelujah, and the joy will come. Two, we help people to have a close relationship with God. If everyone in church has a close relationship with God, the revival will come. Three, we motivate people to obey and serve God and lay hands on them and help them to, to be spirit-filled. So we help them to grow in the Lord, to, to love God and serve God. And then we lay hands on, on them to experience the Holy Spirit. And then we train them to lay hands on people to experience the Holy Spirit. So if more people, they have a clean life and a good relationship with God, they can lay hands on people to experience the Holy Spirit. And we encourage them to pray and serve God together and share what they have done for God. So um, that we pray, uh, we encourage these people to pray together and then serve God together and share what they've done. That ignites more people to be revived and zealous for God. So if we build up spiritual life, we ask the person to, to, uh, to share with the whole group to encourage other people also to grow like that. Now I, in my church, I always encourage people to share what they have experienced. So to encourage other people how to, uh, that God has used this person and how we can also grow in the Lord. Mm -hmm.